Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator once again. Today, we are flying the CRJ 550. Uh, not the 700, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, and uh, we are going to be operating as GoJet Airlines out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they don't do this flight very much. I don't think they do it at all anymore. Um, but uh, Springfield to St. Louis today, my hometown. Uh, and we're going to be dodging some weather. So this is the Aerosoft CRJ 550. This thing is incredible. We're going to talk about that uh, here in a minute. Um, I'll have my yoke camera and everything set up today for today's flight. So you can see what I'm using as well. Uh, wanted to say a very, very happy Saturday to everybody. And let's get started. All right, before we start our uh, flight today, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a walk around here so you can see the airplane's uh, 3D modeling. It is fantastic. Aerosoft really knocked it out of the park with this, especially with the texturing. It just looks really good. Um, the green color you're seeing there, that's just kind of a default uh, Microsoft Flight Sim thing. Uh, they already did the baggage, so the doors are still open from it, but um, it is there. Here's the wing route looking very nice. I love the attention to detail on the actual landing light system. Look at that. Wow. I am so blown away. I've been flying this airplane, getting used to it, and I've had nothing but fun uh, doing it. And uh, what's the difference between the CRJ 550 and the 700, you might be asking? Well, it's really not much. It, it's the same size airplane and stuff. Uh, it's just how the interior is configured. And... Uh, Nothing as far as the actual uh, cockpit or anything, but uh, the the uh, configuration for the seats. Uh, it seats less people, but it allows them to have their uh, have their little business class happening there. Man, here is the back there where the APU is. Uh, great sounds in this airplane too, by the way. Very very nice. We're just doing a quick walk around. We're not going to be doing a first officer's like in depth walk around or anything like that. But we are looking at the airplane and making sure it's good to go. Um, we are currently on the ramp in Springfield, like I said, but the uh, jetways are not working. So unfortunately, passengers are going to have to come out here in the rain and load on. They're not going to be real thrilled about that. I can tell you that right now. Uh, even the chalks, if you look down here, the chalks even are modeled beautifully. <laughs> like they didn't they didn't mess around here, man. This is. This is a gorgeous airplane. Let's uh, let's get up into the cockpit and get things going here. And welcome aboard the CRJ 550. Um, you can see this thing is beautiful inside and out. Um, there's a couple things that I'm going to talk about as I get to them. Uh, things I wish we had working in the airplane. Uh, you know, with the weather outside right now, I sure wish we had a working radar Aerosoft. That'd be really really good. We're going to have to visually try to get around everything, but all the lighting and detail you could imagine. Uh, it's all here and you can adjust, you know, your lighting how you want it. Floodlights on each side are independent of each other. Uh, you have your pedestal down here and then you have your own floodlight there in the middle. You can adjust that. You can adjust the, uh, the circuit breaker panel and uh, also the lights uh, behind all of our gauges and stuff, which is really cool. Um, the CRJ has the CRT monitors, so they have that kind of like uh, uh, bulbous kind of look to them, which is really cool. Um, the only gripe I have is that they're tiny. So um, this is my default view here. I've moved it significantly further forward than I have in the past. Uh, and I, I can see a little bit better if I do it that way. But uh, over here on the left, we have the electronic flight bag. This thing is amazing. Now, when I first got this airplane, I, it was stuck on the ramp. I couldn't do anything. Um, if I go into my options uh, and go to the next page, this is where you go in to calibrate your throttle right here. And... Uh, yeah, and I was not getting any raw input data from my throttles. Now I am. Like, if I move them, you'll see them. There they are there. Uh, but that was not working. I had to go in uh, into my um, into my controls and then make sure that I could select axes from uh, anything that did not have a 0 to 100 on it. Of course, they do tell you that. But it wasn't uh, detecting it. So I had to use the drop down list to find it. If you run into that problem, um, that is how you fix it. So keep that in mind. Uh, back to here. We have checklists originating. We got before start. Uh, we'll use that clear to start because we're in a uh, turnaround state right now. Uh, performance table. Love this because we can change to zero fuel weights. So you can use your uh, numbers you get off a of sim brief. Very, very, very cool. You can do uh, takeoff speeds. We'll get all that stuff here in a minute. Um, we're just kind of doing a, a quick look at this thing. We're not going to be doing it in-depth, uh, cold and dark just yet. Um, here's how you open your doors, all that. Here's the wheel chocks. You can adjust your cabin lights. Um, all of this stuff is right here. Uh, and then the aircraft states are right here. Cold and dark, turn around, ready for startup, uh, ready for taxi. 
uh, default states and turnaround. Now, by default and turnaround, it's not 100% there, but uh, we'll talk about that again later on. Uh, Maintenance-wise, you can stow to ADG. You can uh, stow passenger oxygen masks. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with this. Reset the brake temperature. Um, you can uh, reconnect the IDGs back here uh, and refill the crew oxygen. So there is some maintenance you can do to your airplanes. I do look, I love the fact that they have that. Uh, and then your options menu, obviously. Uh, a lot of things here. You can change your weight units, temperature units, uh, barometer units. Um, you can sync them. Uh, you can have them independent if you want. I like them synced. Uh, flight director mode, so I like the dual queue on that. IRS line time instant, please. I don't want to sit around and wait for that forever. Autopilot disconnect yoke sensitivity I have on medium. Um, you can change all that. I, there's the throttle detent hints. Uh, and then the flight number location, the flight plan page. All this stuff is customiz customizable. Um, you can have cabin announcements, flight attendants, all this stuff. I have it shut off because we're using Pack X today uh, for this flight. Um, coming down the line, everything else looks good. Kind of just however you want it to be. Uh, and that is the uh, electronic flight bag, the EFB. Let's go ahead and open up Pack X here and we'll get a flight going. I'm going to go ahead and start a flight. Uh, not worried about that. We have Springfield to St. Louis. We're going to be cruising at 230 today. 29 is not going to be attainable. Um, flight time for about 40 minutes. Uh, passenger count, we're going to be absolutely maxed out here with 50. Uh, aircraft is CRJ100. That is fine. Uh, that's how they have the configuration set up there. Not a, five, not a 700 series uh, with all the different seats in them. Uh, hit next on that. Wi-Fi, yes, we do have it on board here. Uh, custom safety briefing, I'll grab that real fast and then we'll continue. All right, I have my United Safety Wave uh, ready to go there. Can serve snacks and drinks. No meals on board this regional jet. Hit start on that. And there we go. Everybody's going to be getting on board the airplane. And let's get things pre-flighted. So here is the FMS, our wonderful FMS. And I got to say, there's a lot of depth here uh, as far as it goes. And we're not going to go into all of it today. But it's really, really, really realistic as far as what you can do. Uh, let's go to the pause in it page here. Uh, we are in Springfield right now, so we're going to go ahead and put SGF in there. Uh, we've got our gate and all this. We're not worried about that because we're kind of off the gate anyway. Um, to set our position, we're just going to go to the next page here. Grab one of the GNSS1 positions. Uh, go back and then grab that. Throw it in the set position. There we go right there. We go to the flight plan page, and it's kind of like, you know, a McDo on an Airbus a little bit. You know, it was, or it's more like a Boeing than you would think, honestly. Um, so Springfield... And we're going to St. Louis, my hometown, man. Haven't been there in a while. STL. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to be taking off, I believe, runway 14, but let's go ahead and uh, get the ATIS and figure that out. Altimeter tree. Here There's altimeter our five. altimeter there, 3035. Runway 14 in use. ILS 14 in use. Beautiful. All right, flight attendants are doing their thing there. Let's go ahead and get our uh, altimeter set here. 3035 in there, and we're going to be expecting runway 14 for departure. Let's put 14 in the. Uh, runway right there. Um, Perf they're in it, Paige. Oh, they're ready to go back there. Damn, that was quick, man. All right, they're awesome. Uh, execute that. Perf in it, Paige. Uh, let's go to the next page. And welcome aboard flight okay, they're going to be talking about 11. that. Our flight time there you go. Uh, cruise altitude today, 230. Sure throw that in there. Mode and your there go. Execute that. We'll get all this shows. stuff here in a minute here, but let's go back to the... Uh, the flight plan page and what we're going to do is we're going to do a departure and arrival we're going direct out to coop so what this is going to entail as we come back here the arrival in st louis is we're going to be doing ils one two right approach on the coop one arrival uh springfield transition execute that and that's pretty much all we have to do on this flight plan today and we can go in here and change out if we want to get on airways discos all there uh to remove but all you gotta do here is just go springfield to that but we're going to go 1-4, and we're going to go direct to Coop. We're not even going to hit Springfield right next to it, so we don't need to. Hit Execute right there. They don't want to waste any time. We don't either. Head back over to the EFB performance table here. Uh, I'm going to grab my numbers and throw them in there. We're going to go to zero fuel weight on this. Our zero fuel weight today is going to be... Let's just go ahead and clear it out. It's going to be 53698. So 53698 right there. And our fuel is going to be about 10,008 pounds. And you can jump this up a little bit right there. It's actually not bad at all. We'll take that. Set payload in simulator. It'll kind of bobble around there. Uh, copy perf in it data to FMS. Hit that. It did it right there. That's wonderful. And uh, we should be good to go as far as all that goes. On the right-hand side, we want to go ahead and select flaps 8 for departure. Runway condition is going to be wet. V-speeds are increased that way. Uh, and now we can hit set all. 
And when we do that, check it out. It is now uh, down here, actually. Set all our V speeds right there. Um, we're gonna set this thing to 200. And the CRJ, you basically go gear up and you hit your speed button. So uh, they're gonna climb. We're gonna climb out at 200 knots here today. There we go. Three, two, one, zero. There we go. Flight directors can come on, and we'll go nav, and we're gonna go speed as far as that goes. When the time comes, climb 200. That looks what we want there. Uh, might be a not be 100% how it is. I am not a CRJ pilot. Uh, I'm only going off of what I know. Um, so that's there. You can put a flex temp in there if you want to. We're not worried about it. We're not. Uh, we're not wasting any. Uh, anybody's money so uh that's what we got going on for that and uh now we can go to our vnav setup page make sure this all makes sense to us transition altitude's good 250 at 10 000. uh 0.74 in the target speed we'll, we'll do 74 to mock 0.80 right around in there today but i think we're going to go with 0.74 that works for me uh perf init page now we have all this stuff in here um that wasn't before is now all been uh, filled out now the isa deviation today um is going to be uh they go they're they're putting it in uh, fahrenheit but it's going to be uh zero so if i put zero in here it's going to convert that anyway so there we go which is 32 works for me uh you can put in the winds there for crew climb cruise and descent i'm not worried about it uh vnav setup is uh is already good to go there um and that pretty much ends that all right it's all up to us now so close everything up here and remove those chalks there we go cockpit to ground go ahead flight tech we will be ready shortly. Okay, I uh, will hold. All right, so there you go. We just told them that we're ready to go. They're going to hold and wait for us. Uh, and we're done there. Checklist for before star. Checklist passenger signs. Let's make sure those are on. Uh, and they are indeed both on. Looks good there. Um, landing elevation. Uh, basically going to be... We'll, we'll get that later on. Uh, but we could actually try to do it. It's kind of difficult to do in this airplane. You have to come up here and you have to increase this guy. But you can't see anything unless you're looking, you know, basically down here. And I, these pop-outs were not working for me at all. But the landing elevation data is right there. See at 560? That'll work for me. It's about 500 in St. Louis. I think it's a little bit different, but we'll we'll start with that. All right, landing elevation is good. Altimeters are set. IRSs are aligned in nav. Radios and nav aids are set. Takeoff briefing complete. Clear to start. APU, we're going to check that that's on. It is. Electrics are checked. Uh, takeoff data has been set. Doors are closed and locked. Beacons on. Right? Uh, no, it's not. It is now. Beacon is on. Fuel pumps in quantity uh, up here on here. We're going to turn them on. And uh, that should be pretty much it. Hydraulic pumps all come to the on position. So down here, we'll put those guys to the on position. There we go. Very nice. All right. And parking brake is uh, when we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and call up the pushback. clear behind and you can start your engines at your discretion all right so not a very long pushback today but uh, let's go ahead and start the engines up very simple over here on the right hand side just hit the start button they're starting their safety briefing back there wonderful and now we have n2 rotation right there looking good there we go we're, we're looking for 20 percent on that and I'll show you how we fire these engines up. Push back complete. Set parking brakes, please. All right. Push back is complete. Parking brakes set. Roger. Okay. The tow bar is disconnected. And the There's 20 right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this guy here. And move that into the position of the idle position there. See you later. A lot of stuff happening all at once. I know. I do know that. Release your seatbelt. Lift the buckle flap. When the seatbelt sign is illuminated, immediately be seated and buckle up. To ensure your safety, your seatbelt should be fastened at all times when you are seated. A good start there on the right-hand side. Let's go and start engine number one next. That is firing up. And we're keeping an eye on that. Watch an ITT one below uh, 100 when it gets to 20. There's 10. We should fire up nice and good here. We're waiting for that 20% here. And then we'll do the same thing we just did. Right there, 20, and we put that there to idle position. And uh, we got a good engine start there. There's the ITT looking good. It was way before, you know, make it below 100 there. All right, we got oil temp. Oil pressure is rising. ITT is rising right there. Awesome, that's what we want to see. Remove 
After start checklist, gens are auto, electrics are checked, bleed valves are auto, packs are on, APU. I'm up here, we're gonna go ahead and turn that thing off. We don't need any more, so you hit the power fuel button and then the stop button on that guy. Back over here, uh, anti-ice and then nose wheel steering. So nose wheel steering, steering's right here, put that on. And then we are definitely gonna be using anti-ice on the way out because it is storming. Don't wanna get into a position of that problem. Let's go and go flaps eight. Placards and crew member instructions. Please ensure your carry-on items and tray tables are stowed, your seat back is in its full upright position, headrest stowed, and your seat belt is securely fastened. So All right, let's go down here. We'll go to the flight control page. And uh, you see it right over here on the right. I've got left, neutral, right. I got forward, back, left, rudder, right rudder. Beautiful. Let's check our trim. So over here on the performance tab, they said trim's going to be 5.8 units. So we can go ahead and go 5.8 on that. Uh, with our trim setting here, we'll look for 5.8. I'll zoom in over here. You can see it. And 5.8 is set right there. Awesome. So that's good. Back to the checklist. Uh, we're good there. That's part of the taxi checklist, but it's part of the flow. Uh, slats flaps are set. Eight, four, departure. Flight controls are checked. Free and correct. Trims are set. Green. Uh, thrust reversers. Got to arm those bad boys. They're right down here. Got one and two there. Beautiful. Uh, flight instruments are checked. And brake temps are good. That is it. Let's go ahead and get on out of here. We'll go taxi over to runway one four. So the middle lights will come on there. Go ahead and uh, get this guy. What I like to do is hit the stab trims. Mock trim. And I keep the yaw damper off for uh, the beginning part of our flight. We'll turn them on once we get airborne. So let's go ahead and make our left turn here and taxi over to runway We have five minutes to get out of here. Give me wheels up in five minutes. We're trying to stay right on time there. Uh, so we have the yaw damper there, um, research fan, and all that is good. We have anti ice on. Um, I do have, I did adjust our altitude to 230. It was originally set at 10. Uh, so we have that at uh, 230 now, which is fantastic. And we want to taxi at about 15 knots or so here, but uh, I think we're going to be just fine on our departure time. I know we'll be able to make up time once we're in the air anyway, so kind of a win-win there. But uh, let's get that research fan on, make them happy with that, and then uh, we will be pretty much ready to go here. Before takeoff checklist, license strobes, we'll get that with the fuel X flow over to manual here, so let's go ahead and do that now. That's over to there. Let's go ahead and just get our strobe logo. We'll get our lane lights on as well because we're almost down here to the end of the runway uh, for departure here. Make sure that the wind looks good, and it does. We see that uh, it's kind of moving around a little bit there, but we it is at our tail. That's what we want. Wonderful. So that's all good to go. And then uh, back over here, we've got uh, transponder. Not worried about that. Not flying online. Flight attendants are good to go. Radar, terrain display, and then cast is checked. Uh, cast is good. We got um, right there. On the right hand side main x flow so we want to see and then we got our um anti-ice on yaw damper light is on that's pretty much everything we want to see there so that's good all right looks like it stopped raining over here um would love to see for these actual uh wipers to work they don't work uh they don't move rain out of the way oh man lightning out in the distance there another thing is as you come down here to turn your uh, weather radar on and unfortunately it, it'll say WX on there, but there is no working weather radar in this airplane yet. And that's unfortunate, especially today when we're dealing with weather, you know. All right, so lights are all on. We are clear for takeoff runway 1-4. We're not going to use the uh, default ATC today. No need for that. Start the clock. Clock is going. Man, look at that rainbow right in front of us there. That looks so damn good. And uh, let's line up on the runway.
All right, I wanted to make sure I got a good uh, view of the rainbow there for you. That's really cool. Runway 14, that is correct. That's what we want. We're lining up on it now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up the power, let them stabilize a little bit here. Uh, we have our yoke cam and push forward on that. And we're going to go to Toga. Takeoff power is set. And we have that crosswind, a little slight crosswind to the right here. So just a little bit of right aileron there. Airspeed's alive. 80 knots. Put upon our V-speed, bring out that aileron as we get to it. V1, rotate, nice and smooth. There we go, positive rate, gear up. Right on the crosshair. Trimming the airplane out where we need it. Gonna keep it in this uh, mode right here for now until we start to uh, change things up. Maintain about that 200 knots right there. Looking good. And we'll go to climb thrust here in a minute. Clear out of here just a little bit further. Start our turn to the left. And what I love about the CRJ is, man, you, you do so much uh, so much hand flying with it. Uh, you really do. And it's awesome. All right, let's go to climb thrust here. We're starting to get a little fast, faster than we need to be there. Looking good there. Yep, these are all the storms around the area we're going to be dodging. Say goodbye to Springfield, Missouri. Leave a comment below if you're from Springfield, Missouri. I've been there many times. Grew up in Lebanon, Missouri, just, a, just up the road on 44. All right, looking good here. And we clean up the airplane, bring those flaps in. Still many 200 knots here. Awesome. A little bit more to the left here. This will be a good intercept uh, about right here. So we're going to roll off. I know the line's going to be to our left, but that's okay. Roll off this way. Awesome. And looking to the left there. See all the clouds. Very nice. Beautiful climb out of, uh, of Springfield here. All the clouds in the area. Let's go ahead and turn our nose lights off. Clean that stuff up. There we go. Wonderful. Let's get that yaw damper on too, like I said. You don't want to forget about those. There we go. They're on now. It should have been on during the climb, but that's okay. So basically with the CRJ, you just kind of go gear up. Um, you go speed mode because you want to climb out at 200. We are now passing through 10, There's 10,000 foot already. Now turn on your larger portable electronic devices. As a reminder, please keep your seatbelt fastened while you are seated and do not congregate in the galley or near the laboratory. You got it. We do offer complimentary in-flight seating to our partners. Connect to the Wi-Fi, and you'll be able to access our wide range of free live speed All right, our airspeed is increasing, bringing that nose down right now. We're going to go ahead and engage the autopilot. We're above 18,000, so we're on 2992 for that. Whoa, that was a big bolt of lightning right in front of our faces. How nice of them. And then we'll adjust our speed as we need to from there. But right now, we're looking pretty good. We go to the range you see out here. There's Coop. We need to cross Coop. Well, it's actually going to be our top of descent right at Coop. So uh, we are currently 96, 95 nautical miles from that. So we got a little bit of a little bit of time left here. And uh, once the airplane gets to its speed, it's going to start that climb again, and we'll hit uh, two three zero, no problem. All right, we're looking for a mock speed of about 0.74, like I said. It's going to be a short cruise, so we're just watching our speed right now. No in-flight services today. It's too, too short of a flight. I'm sure our uh, passengers are going to love that. All right, made it to 230. It's nice and uh, easy right now, so we turn those passenger signs off. And also, um, 
if we want to if we hit turbulence what's really cool in the crj is you can hit the turb button right here uh and that will uh decrease the actual um amount of banking the airplane does to compensate for it um very cool little feature that it has i do like that all right coming up on mach 0.74 right now we're gonna just pull power back just a little bit just a tad right there that should be good right there and we're looking good right now we've got a uh cruise altitude going here 67 nautical miles to top of descent Cruising along here, everything is good. We're at uh, flight level 230, dodging some storms, but uh, not really having to do a whole lot of deviating, honestly. Um, the, the storms seem to be staying away from us, uh, but it looks like the system is moving towards the uh, the north uh, east there, so we might catch up to it. I, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, so far, my impressions of this airplane are very good. Um, I wish we had, you know, working wipers, I, small little things like that. I uh, wish we had the uh, working weather radar and terrain radar. We don't have that, unfortunately. Um, those are the little things. Uh, other than that, I'm very impressed with it. It's uh, it's worth the money so far for me. Uh, if you want to check it out, of course, it will be linked in the description below. You can check it out there. Um, I paid for it by, by myself. I didn't uh, get this given to me for free or anything like that. Uh, thrusters are reversers should be off in flight. Duh. Come on now, Jeff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's gorgeous, man. I, I absolutely adore this airplane. Something fun you can do that I learned from a real CRJ pilot is we can go over here to the direct intercept, uh, the direct to page here. So we can direct anything we want to uh, by using that. But what happens is it'll show you, say here, flight level 230, we're gonna cross over coop. This gives you an expected amount of descent rate you're gonna want between these points. So from coop to Kayla, you have you know, 800, 900 now, uh, 1100, 1300. You can have around about uh, idea of what to expect for that for vertical speed so we climb in speed mode and we're going to descend in vertical speed mode today um, so that is very helpful there's other things that happen which I'll show you later on we get a little snowflake and then we'll have a little blue donut um, for you to follow uh, as well for the VNAV but the airplane it's not automated it doesn't do everything for you you know what I mean uh, like an Airbus would uh, you have to be on top of the plane and uh, and fly it and those are the things that I really, really enjoy about the CRJ. All right, 15 minutes and 50 seconds into our flight so far, and we are currently 25 nautical miles from our top of descent. Um, we don't have to do any landing data and stuff like that that you would have to in an Airbus. Um, that's what we have the landing elevation for, um, which I will double check here in a minute. But uh, but there's the river. Nice. Um, about over the uh, the Missouri River there. Uh, that looks like Jefferson City, actually. Right there. We're over. Um, but uh, looking over here, before landing is basically it. Our descent checklist is just going to be landing, elevation, fuel, uh, TCAS, radar, CAS, landing, and approach briefing. All these things, not a big deal. We're just going to keep it on before landing because that's all we're going to need uh, for this one. And we're about to start our way down here very soon, actually. All right, almost to our top of descent. So what I can do is just go ahead and we're going to initially descend down to 10,000. We need to cross scale it to uh, 15.8. So let's go ahead and go 10 on that. That works for me. We'll be ready to go here in uh, 11 miles. And uh, we just start our way down with the vertical speed mode. That's pretty much it. But we're going to wait till we hit that top of descent, maybe a little bit before it. Uh, and that will be just fine and dandy. Um, apart from that... We're all set up for our arrival. Um, so if we go into the, uh, you can go to the radio page here if you want to change your uh, VORs. You have auto tuning and manual tuning for those. Um, we're just, we're using the nav to nav mode. So basically it's going to grab the ILS from our, uh, uh, you know, approach that we put in there. Uh, and it's going to throw it in there automatically. Now you, you'll have FMS1 and it'll be a blue line. That'll be a blue loc. 
and whenever it hits that that's just basically a temporary but over to the nav source we're going to move that over to uh the localizer itself and fly it in we're just about to our top of descent four miles here we're waiting about two miles from there and we're going to start our way down we get this plenty of time there it goes right there starting to tell us hey it's going to start turning to kayla and it is now so let's go ahead and go to vertical speed mode and we'll start our way down initially doing its little capture here come on vertical speed there you are it really wanted to go down didn't it let's go to about two start at 1800 then we'll follow it down and see what we get uh last time i didn't get a snowflake on this we'll see if we get a snowflake and a donut on this one today but we know we're supposed to cross kayla at uh, 15 6 so let's go ahead and do exactly that in our turn slow the airplane down too thing wants to go man wants to go 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 so we'll go ahead and put our uh, speed here at 280. There we go. We're probably going to be using some... Uh, oh, it's going to do that thing where it, it... Okay. Another thing this airplane does is it seems to have issues getting back onto a nav mode. If it does that, what I have found is if you put you know, your heading uh, selector where you want it. Uh, and we're going to actually... Let's go into heading mode here. And if I do this and put it back on the line... Uh, it should settle the airplane down, and then once it captures it, we'll go ahead and engage it again. But this is what I'm talking about. You have to be, like, very just hands-on with the plane. Watch your throttles. You have no auto throttle. All this stuff has to be done in flight. So there's our heading there. Now we can go over to the nav mode, and it should should be okay. It shouldn't do any wild turns here. we we'll be doing some uh, cloud surfing here, it looks like. Very nice. So we're uh, on our way down here, and uh, we have a snowflake. We're looking good there, and that's the blue donut I was talking about. So about 2,000 feet per minute is what they want out of the, the descent. So put that on uh, 2,000 there, and you just monitor it. You monitor the snowflake, blue donut on your way down. It's giving you the VNAV profile, uh, and then your speed as well. We're at 280 right now, looking good. We'll cross uh, Kayla at uh, 280, and then we'll start slowing down for 250 to get down to 10,000. Now, initially, descend down to 10. Kind of odd as a, a habit that I had flying the Airbus. Uh, I didn't want it to, you know, you don't want it to be over 250 knots below 10,000 feet. So I keep that on there for that reason. But as you can see, we're holding speed really well right here. We got uh, the snowflake and the donut captured very nicely. And down into the soup we go. We'll make sure our uh, anti-ice is on. All right, anti-ice is on and good to go. That's what we want, especially up here in these higher altitudes. We've been in and out of those... Uh, like that so let's have a look at our arrival here now we get into vectors so what we're going to do is once we get to uh, foxtrot tango zulu we're below 18 so let's go to the local altimeter setting here will let us come on buddy oh we're almost to it that's why um but uh after foxtrot tango zulu um we're going to go ahead and just go direct to poly is what we're going to do so we can actually you know use this uh this direct uh, to from here if we wanted to we could actually go direct to poly if we wanted now we just select it um, But instead we just go to the legs page and we can just go hey after FTZ let's go direct to poly So let's go to the next page go poly here. There's the disco there uh, And then we're gonna say after FTZ we're gonna go there so that execute it And then there's our new plan right there and looking good there. Um, there we go local outside was 2985 looking wonderful on our descent Alright, one to go here. Pulling our power back. We're going to be looking for 250 on the speed here. Let's just go ahead and slow down to 220, actually. Let's be ahead of the plane. No need for anything crazy here. And altitude can come on down to uh, about 4,600 uh, or so. Vertical speed mode to keep it coming down. And we'll look for about 4,600 for this approach. There we go. Get that down, down, down. I want about 
1,800 feet per minute, looks like. We're on the snowflake, looking good. Oh, up a little bit here. Grab it back. Okay. Land lights come on. Wing lights on. And there we are. All right. So we're going to grab the ILS out here. We're going to go ahead and click on the heading bug guy here to recenter that guy. And here's what I was talking about. There's the uh, loc one happening right there. So we're going to go into heading mode now. And then we're going to go to the nav source over to the right. And boom, we have loc one, course 124. That's runway 12 uh, right. And then we can also arm the approach. So it should grab the glide slope when we get closer too. So uh, that's what we're doing. Still slowing her down. 230 knots now. Looking good. For a little bit of a speed break out there. That helps out tremendously. And as we get closer to our intercept, we're going to slow down about 190 knots here. Then we can put our uh, first notch of flaps in here in a minute. If we look at our placards here, it says right there, flaps one. Uh, I get to go down a little bit so we can actually see it. <laughs> uh, right there is 230, 230, 230, 185. So we're, we're well below uh, that. So we can just go ahead and go flaps one, speed checks for flaps one. Here they come on down like that. Looking good here. And now we want a better intercept on the runway. So what we're actually going to do is go to a range a little closer here. Uh, a little bit closer than that, actually. I went the wrong way. Uh, and we want to kind of shoot for hand there, so, or Nairn. So let's go ahead and just go heading mode uh, a little bit further to the right here. And uh, looks like that's going to be good. A heading of 070 to intercept the localizer. That way the airplane doesn't have to turn too hard, you know what I mean? So we have flaps one out there. We're looking good on that. Um, airplane's still in its descent. It's got the gl uh, localizer now. Looks like... No, it has glide slope, I believe. Loke one's flashing, so it's about to intercept the Loke. Uh, nope, don't have glide slope yet. It will, it'll be green when we do. So we're still in that descent rate, looking good here. On down, on down we go. Maintaining speed, looking good. And go a little bit closer on the range here. And uh, we should have that in a minute. There's a glide slope right there. So I think it is actually going down on the glide slope because it's white here. Seems like it is. Yeah, vertical speed mode's turned off, so it's definitely got the glide slope now. It's going to be tracking on the loke. It's flashing us right now to let us know, man, these storms aren't messing around today in the Midwest. They're not messing around at all. Um, it's flashing to let us know that we're real close to it. We're about to intercept it. So that's good news for us. And a little bit more power here because we are going to be, it's, you know, no auto throttle. You have to be remem reminded of that. You know, you don't want to get too slow and all that stuff here we're over the uh, st charles area now and we're about to turn on to the localizer for one two right absolutely beautiful pull back a little bit here we got those uh speed brakes i'm gonna put them put them back i'm gonna pull my power out completely here i don't need that help anymore localizer is alive and got a crosswind from the right there Let's go ahead and just make sure it's good to go here. They might have changed up their uh, winds. I hope they didn't. Let's get the ATIS here real fast. So we're looking at altimeter wise, 3039. All right. Eight seven. ILS runway one one ILS runway one two left and ILS runway one two right in use. Landing and departing runway one one runway one two left and runway one two right. Okay, two nine or eight seven on that. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Nine seven, not what we want. We want eight seven. Come on. You have Charlie. There we go. Two nine or eight seven. Got it. Let's go and go gear down. Next setting of flaps. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Gear's coming down right now. Flaps there. Next setting of flap here. Add a little bit of power here. Let's get our V-speed set. So we have to come over here to uh, performance. 
and set our VREF. I just set it all and then set VREF. 125, it looks like today. There it is right there. Let it pull on back a little bit here. We're letting it fly itself uh, while we're managing all the throttles and stuff. There's the next setting of flap and all that and the speed we have on our tape. All right. So uh, spoilers are stowed away. Uh, flaps are down. Gear is down three green. Let's do our uh, quick little uh, checklist here. Four landing checklists. Uh, thrusters are reversers. That's what it was. Don't want to forget those. Need those on. You do, you do. Uh, land gear slats. Yep, good to go there. Sweet. All right. We are clear to land runway one, two, right. Looking good right now. It's still slowing down a little bit. A little bit of power out. Put my uh, feet on the actual pedals here. And a little bit more power here because we're going to be getting on that glide slope, it looks like. I don't want to get too slow. All right, we're still looking good here. Let's make sure our lights are all on. There we go. Looking wonderful here. Slowing down. We're going to go full on the flaps here. A little bit more power. Get on our V-Ref here. All right, we're going to go ahead and just disconnect the autopilot, my airplane. That way I can hand fly it a little bit here. It does hand fly pretty brilliantly. I do like it a lot. Watching our amount of power we're adding here. And the winds are a little bit off to our right right now, but the winds were supposed to be zero niners one. Uh, so they should be out or our left. We should have that crosswind happening there. Once we get closer to the ground, it'll probably start to transition to that. Back on the trim there. A couple more times. So I've got my little green dot there, which is my glide slope. I've got the localizer there. I'm following the crosshairs. Um, our speed is supposed to be 125 VREF, so we're slowing down even more now. Try to get on that VREF speed. You don't want to get too slow or you're falling out of the sky, though, you know? And there's that wind starting to move to the left there, as it should. We're a tad early on our arrival, which is good. They're not going to complain about that. There we go. Looking good on speed and altitude. Bring that nose up a little bit more. There we go. Crossing over Highway 270 here in a minute. That's the new runway. 1-1 one, one on our right over there. And small movements I found with this airplane. You can't sling this yoke around. Um, it's very sensitive. A few bumps here and there. No big deal. Get too slow here. Add a little bit of power. All right, now we got our uh, Pappy lights, so we're not going to look at the ILS anymore. We're just going to look at the Pappy lights and get ourselves down there to that touchdown markers. Slow down a little bit more. You really have to babysit these throttles so much with this airplane. That's okay. I love it. good here. Add low, bring the nose up. It's hard to get that power setting right where you want it. And this airplane does float a little bit, so we'll, you want to pull that power out a little earlier than you think. There's that wind from the left now. We're looking good. 200. Right around the 50 call out, we're going to pull that power. 100. Little left rudder, not much. 50. 40, okay, idle on that power there, bringing 30, the nose up for the flare. 20. Ten. Roll it on down. Reverses come open. Apply the nose wheel down, right rudder for that. And a wind came out of nowhere there. And still our reversers. Go to manual braking now. Welcome to St. Louis. Slowing way down here. We're gonna go over here to the A gates, so we're gonna make our turn off right here if we can. Awesome. Yeah, the sporty little airplane. The local time is 4.24 p.m. and it's currently about 57 degrees Fahrenheit. You can now use your mobile devices.
All right, on the taxi end, we go ahead and hit this button here for the APU door to open up. Wait for the APU door to open. And then we can start it up. There we go, and start the APU now. Looking good, all the lights, everything's all good there. We'll do our uh, little quick landing checklist here. It's a short one after landing checklist. Uh, APU's on, transponder radar, don't worry about it. Slats, flaps are up zero. Lights are set, probes are gonna come off now. So let's go ahead and get them now. Off, off, come on buddy, off on all of you. There we go. Left turn here. A lot of stuff you have to do at the last second whenever you have a short taxi. <laughs> but yeah, we were early, man. That's what we want to see. Go around the corner here to our little uh, gate. About 38 minute flight. That wasn't terrible at all. Not even the slightest. All right, so let's go ahead and get our taxi light off here and taxi in to the ramp. And parking brake comes on. We are on APU power, so to shut the engines down, very simple. You just hit the little red tab, pull it, red tab, and pull it. And it does exactly that. We get the passenger signs off. Off, please. Jeez, man. Those things are touchy. Uh, and then beacon light comes off as well. There we go. Beautiful. What a fun flight that was. Let's get the uh, jetway out to us. And they can start to deboard the airplane here. So aircraft mode here. Open the uh, upstairs down for the jetway. There we go. Wheel chocks can be in place now. We'll get these open here. And we're going to ask them to bring out the bags. The baggage cart. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let me know what you thought of the Aerosoft CRJ in the description below. Or in that description, but the comments below. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hello, everybody. It's Jeff. I uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, merch is available if you check out the link in the description below. And uh, there should be some images you can click on below the video as well. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I do appreciate it.